Who should be the LA Kings' next general manager? That and more on this Friday fan feedback edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we are on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 18 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. We're going to get into your emails and Kings feedback in just a second, but I had to start with the tragedy that has hit the hockey world hard and that is the death of columbus blue jackets forward johnny gaudreau and his younger brother matthew they were both killed thursday night after being struck by a suspected drunk driver while biking they were together in their native new jersey to be part of their sister's wedding which was scheduled for friday i mentioned every show that i have been a kings fan for over 30 years but i really became a member of this hockey community about 18 years ago when i started to co-host the puck podcast That show has allowed me to connect with a lot of different people from across the entire NHL, and I've been very pleasantly surprised at how connected people associated with this sport are. It really is, for a professional sport, a very small, tight-knit community, and that's why things like this hit so hard and get such an emotional response from people all over North America, from Vancouver to Boston, Florida to California, all points in between. I went to work Thursday night into Friday morning while on the air working at the Fox Sports Radio Network while all of this story was developing and I was glued to the internet and social media both as a hockey fan and as a reporter who gives sports updates four times an hour to hundreds of affiliates across the country. I had hoped as the hours went on that this was just some awful internet hoax, but around 4.20 a.m. Pacific time, the tweet came out from Aaron Portsline of the Columbus Dispatch confirming the awful news. I was 12 years old when my older sister was unexpectedly killed in a plane crash, so I can relate to what it's like to unexpectedly lose a beloved member of your family way too soon. That said, my sister didn't have any kids or a spouse like Johnny and Matthew did, and I know how hard it impacted my family, honestly, forever. My mom was literally never the same, and we only lost one family member, not two. So I know I speak for all of you in the hockey community and sending out our heartfelt condolences to the Gaudreau family. While it's possible that at least financially, Johnny Gaudreau's wife and kids should be okay as far as the money they're going to need going forward as the family of a former NHL superstar, Matthew Gaudreau is not an NHL star. He did play a few years of minor league hockey, but he leaves behind a pregnant wife and a young child. There has been a GoFundMe page set up for his family. And if you want to contribute to that, you can click on the link that I put out there on our X and Twitter account at Locked on LA Kings, or you can go to gofund.me slash E6B42E17. That's gofund.me slash E6B42E17. I know I speak for all of you in sending out our heartfelt condolences to the Gaudreau family and all of his friends and teammates for Johnny and Matthew. And one more thing, if I may, we should not have to be reminded how much we appreciate those people in our life that we love, but we're human beings, we're flawed, um, and if this awful news does anything good, let it be a reminder that we don't know when those people in our life that we love can be taken from us. So appreciate them while you can. Let them know how much you appreciate them by telling them or showing them. And in honor of Johnny and Matthew, maybe do that to somebody this weekend. All right, there is no easy way to move off of that. So we'll just do it. 
and we uh, will get to our first email on this Friday fan feedback show, and it comes from Rob in Westchester. He says, I'll keep this one short and to the point. Everyone's talking about getting rid of Rob Blake, and I'm completely on board with that. Here's the question. Who should replace him? Looking forward to your reply. Go Kings go. Rob, it's a great question. Um, I will answer by saying if the Kings need to hire a general manager here in the near future, I hope it's someone from outside the organization. With all due respect to assistant GM Nelson Emerson, who I think would be the likely leading candidate if the Kings were looking within the organization, and I'm not even going to bring up Mark Bergevin, I think the Kings need fresh ideas from someone that has no connection to the current regime. I'll give you a couple of names. Uh, the first one is Matthew Darsh. Um, if you're not familiar with him, he is a former NHL player. And every time a GM vacancy comes up, his name always gets mentioned. Now, he's yet to get a job to this point, um, but he seems to be one of the hot candidates out there for sure. Um, he has been the Tampa Bay Lightning Director of Hockey Operations since 2019 and Assistant GM since 2022. He's been a part of a front office that has won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups back in 2020 and 2021 and made three consecutive Stanley Cup Finals appearances. Now, if you want to go even more outside the box, how about making history by hiring one of the qualified female candidates out there? And I'll give you a name. How about Cami Granado? Uh, she's a Hall of Famer. She's been the assistant GM of the Vancouver Canucks since 2022. She was the first female scout in NHL history and is from one of the first families of hockey. And that includes her brother, former LA King, Tony Granado. Regardless, as I said, if the Kings are in need of a new GM here in the near future, someone from outside the organization would be my number one wish. Uh, we're going to talk Kings goaltending past and future. We'll do that next here on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. With a YouTube TV fan base, or, or base plan, I should say, uh, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market NFL game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. And of course, FanDuel is always there for you to bet on your favorite sports, Major League Baseball, golf, soccer, NASCAR, and of course, the upcoming NFL season. Join FanDuel, browse the latest betting odds, your favorite sports and teams on the Sportsbook app, and get in on the action. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sportsbook. All right, we're going to talk a little Kings goaltending past and future. And we start with Scott, and he's in Simi Valley. And he says, good to see King, the Kings sign Eric Bortillo to such a team-friendly contract. And at 6'6", we don't have to question his size. I was wondering what you think about Carter George and Hampton Slikinski, both at 6'1". I haven't seen Slikinski play yet, and only snippets of Bortillo and George. George does seem to do well establishing a square position to the shooter very early and at uh, and he stays quite upright so that should help cover the corners which is where guys like to shoot now along with uh, over the shoulder uh, pads in the glove side uh the preds just gave a much shorter uc saros 60 million dollar contract rogi vashan was only 5 8 and jonathan quick listed at the same height as george and slikinski 6 1 at the end of quick's king's tenure he was playing an incredibly low crouching style and getting beat top corner so with today's shooters being able to hit the spots the size of a coffee cup i'm not feeling entirely confident about six foot nhl keepers anymore and again that was from scott and simi valley and scott i would uh, i would agree with you generally speaking uh if you look at the last five stanley cup winning goalies none of them were six foot two or under uh sergey bobrovsky and jordan bennington were actually six two so no none of them under six two uh, the last five Vesna Trophy winners, only one of them was under six foot two. That was Igor Shosturkin of the New York Rangers. Um, now, I don't like putting concrete limits or parameters on players based on anything. But I think generally speaking, yes, I would feel better. And the trend is in the NHL that bigger is better as far as your NHL goalies. That said, Igor Shosturkin, 6'1", 
just like Hampton Slikinski and Carter George. And I think a lot of people would say he's the best goalie in the NHL. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him win a Stanley Cup here in the near future. But again, we're talking generally speaking, yes, you would prefer a goalie more the size of an Eric Bortillo who is 6'6". So, but you also mentioned Jonathan Quick. We won a couple of Stanley Cups with him and he's 6'1 as well. So like I said, generally speaking, I'm with you. I think the goalies are the, the bigger, the better. Um, but that said, I also don't think we should just discount what Carter George and Hampton Slokinski could do just because they're not six foot two or taller. Uh, our next email comes from Gary in Long Beach. He says, I'm a happy everydayer. Your pod has really helped me feel more connected and informed on what's going on with the Kings throughout the year. Thank you. Well, Gary, thank you for, uh, for that note. I appreciate that. He says, with the slow new season, I wanted to get your thoughts on the uh, Kings schedule for this coming year. They've shifted to earlier weekend games with seven starting at 1 p.m. The others are 4 or 5 p.m. I get the 4 and 5 p.m. starts for East Coast TV, but I'm not a fan of the 1 p.m. games. It's really inconvenient. You have stuff to do on the weekend. Also, a quick note on Monday's goalie recap. You mentioned the Canucks had a solid tandem with Silvos and DeSmith backing up Demko. Smith actually wasn't re-signed, and rumors suggest that they now are searching for another goalie. As insurance, Copley's name has been mentioned as an option, as he doesn't seem to fit in with LA's plans going forward. Go Kings go, and that was Gary in Long Beach. Well, I'll start with the last part of that um, first, and I stand corrected on Casey DeSmith. You're correct. He has not been brought back uh, to be one of the goalies of depth for the Vancouver Canucks, um, but I would, I would absolutely not be looking to part with Phoenix Copley. Uh, I think he's just making over the league minimum, so you got him at a great price. And if he is recovered from his knee injury from a year ago, he's a great insurance policy should the Kings need him as a... And he's also a solid mentor, I think, for Eric Portillo. I mean, Copley is a 10-year uh, veteran of pro hockey. Plus, I just don't see the Canucks really giving up anything significant enough for the Kings to look to, you know, uh, get rid of some of their depth in net. So... Um, yeah, I'm not, I would not be in favor of Phoenix Copley going to the Vancouver, especially, you know, in a division, uh, you know, to help out another team doesn't make a lot of sense. So that would uh, surprise me unless the Canucks were just going to blow the Kings away with an offer, which I don't think that they would do. Um, as far as the schedule for the Kings, I mean, look, um, I could, you, we're all talking from our own perspectives on this. I love the one o'clock starts to me you're getting to do something during the day that you enjoy. And then you still have your, your night <laughs> to, to do whatever it is you want to do. Um, so for me, my weekends, I know that, you know, maybe you have uh, a list from your spouse or something that they want you to get things done. But for me, the weekends are, I'm not scheduling anything uh, on the weekends if I can help it. Um, so I actually really like the 1 PM start times, because like I said, it's not kind of taking away your whole weekend night. So that's me, but uh, I get where you're coming from on that. Our next, uh, feedback comes from Milton Barcos, and he sent this to me through, uh, the X and Twitter account at locked on LA Kings. And he is at sports fan MB. He says, uh, this is overdue. So excuse the late take. I understand Kopitar and Dowdy on your LA Kings Mount Rushmore. I'd still go with Wayne Gretzky as my mind in my mind as he made the Stanley Cup final. He and maybe Dion or Brown. I would not include Jonathan Quick. He had a good three year stretch, three great years, but that's it. He was labeled Mr. Softy for a reason in 2010, 2011, and even at times during the 2012 playoffs for bad goals allowed. After 2014, he was available 50% of the time before he was traded away. Important part of King's history, yes. Mount Rushmore, I don't think so. Wow, uh, Milton, that is uh, that is uh, uh, a surprising take. Um, and I did check out Milton's X account just to make sure he wasn't like trolling us, and he's not. Uh, he rarely posts anything, so appreciate him taking the time to post his opinion. However, I must disagree um, and I also, I never heard the Mr. Softy nickname for John of the Quick. Maybe that was something I missed, or maybe that was just something amongst you and your friends. But uh, I, I look, there's zero chance uh, that John of the Quick, I mean, it, there's zero question that John of the Quick is the greatest goalie in King's history. There's zero question his number 32 
is going to be raised to the rafters by the team shortly after he retires, and there's zero chance he's not a hockey Hall of Famer. Uh, he he was top 10 in Vesna voting trophy for the league's top goalie six different times. He was top five three times. Now, he would never won it. He did fin- finish runner-up one year. But I, I think that in and of itself is enough evidence that he had more than just a good three-year stretch. When you're top 10 in at your position six different times, it's pretty good. So uh, I do appreciate the hot take. And look, I left off Wayne Gretzky. Maybe some people think that's nuts. I would say I think leaving off Jonathan Quick uh, is kind of crazy. But I do appreciate you chiming in with that opinion. Uh, this comes from Ed, formerly Edwin, in Brea. Normally the closer, but he's got goalie talk, so he, we're going to have him close out this segment of goalie talk. He says, you did a show about goalies. How can I not respond since I am one? And he is a uh, roller and ice uh, amateur netminder. Uh, Ed, Ed says, uh, you said Thatcher Demko is the best goalie in the division, and I agree. Best tandem, however, sadly, belongs to the Duckies of Anaheim because John Gibson is the next Patrick Waugh and Lucas Dostal is the next Pecorine. I'm going to stop you right there, Ed. Uh, to quote Chris Tucker in the cinematic classic Rush Hour, what the hell did you just say? Patrick Waugh? And John Gibson mentioned in the same sentence. What? Okay, back to the email. Uh, He says, the tandem of Grubauer and Decord is solid in Seattle. For the Kings goaltending situation, Kemper has to be the guy. He's won a cup and a world championship. If he can be solid and if the Kings can manage shots on goal against, the Kings should be fine. Riddich is a serviceable backup. For the Kings' future goalie, I believe it will not be Eric Portillo. It will be Carter George. To me, he has the character and mental strength to be elite when I saw him at the Kings' development camp. Portillo is good. However, I do see the poise that George has uh, in, in his reasons why he thinks Carter George will be the next Kings' number one goalie. He says, my current top five NHL goalies, number five, Thatcher Demko, number four, Jeremy Swayman, number three, Sergei Bobrovsky, number two, Andre Vasilevsky, and number one, Igor Shosturkin. Wait a minute. Where's John Gibson in this in this list? He says, "Hella bucks overrated." Saros and Ottinger get honorable mentions. Keep up the good work, and go Kings go. Like seriously, Edwin, you're gonna have to explain that John Gibson, Patrick Waugh. You can't just throw that out there and not. I mean, that's nuts. Patrick Waugh is arguably the greatest goalie in the history of the NHL, and John Gibson is not. So I don't. I, I don't know where you're going with that one. I will leave it to you to explain, and I'm sure you will. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. Uh, up next, we're talking Kings lineup for next season and more. That's next on Lockdown Lake Kings, your team every day. Those of us that live here in the LA area, we are so lucky. We have so many opportunities to see live events, sports for sure. I'll be at every Chargers home game this NFL season. I married into Chargers season tickets. But it's not just about sports. We've got theater events and concerts. I'm going to the Hollywood Bowl on Saturday to see a live performance of all the music from the Marvel movies. Yes, I'm a nerd. Uh, But no matter what you enjoy, you need to do what I do and use Game Time for all your ticket needs. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff so you only get incredible deals on great seats and you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Are you a Dodgers fan? Game Time has a 50% off Labor Day offer that you need to check out in a hurry. Uh, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem the code Locked On NHL, L O C K E D O N N H L, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. All right, our next uh, email comes from Keith. He is in Parts Unknown, which he said is a tribute to WWE's Kane. All right. He says, I spent a lot of time tinkering with possible lineups, and I do think the LA Kings' bottom six could be solid. I've got a third line of Alex Turcotte, Philip Deneau, and Akil Thomas. This has the potential on paper to be the next iteration of more Deneau Arvidsson, like Jared Stoll anchoring Dwight King and Jordan Nolan, Jeff Carter with the That 70s line of Tanner Pearson and Tyler Toffoli. It is now Deneau's turn to coach up Turcotte 
and Thomas. For my fourth line, I've got Tanner Janot, Trevor Lewis, and Alex LaFerriere, or Andre Lee, Lewis, and Janot. This line would be physical with the ability to add insult to injury and putting some points on the board, collectively contributing somewhere between 50 and 60 points in the season. Some would say LaFerriere is probably built more for a middle six. I wouldn't argue against it, but this is a role that would take the pressure off him to allow him to just play his game and contribute offensively. He is not a part of this line, um, but Andre Lee would be a nice plug-in option at left wing with Janot sliding to right wing, playing a Bash Brothers brand of hockey. And again, that was from Keith in Parts Unknown. Um, yeah, I think I think we all, or most of us, do like to tinker with our thoughts on the lines. And I would say I would not have Alex Laferriere any lower than the third line. Um, I would like to have either Alex Turcotte or Akil Thomas centering uh, the fourth line over Trevor Lewis. And if you don't have Alex LaFerriere in the top six, who's going to replace Quentin Byfield on the top line? Trevor Moore? Um, and does that mean Warren Fogle is a top six forward? Um, I would go with Kopitar, Kempe, and LaFerriere on the top line. Byfield, Fiala, and Moore on the second line. Uh, Deneau, Fogel and Turcotte on the third line. And then I'd have the fourth line of Thomas centering Janot. And I think Andre Lee, I like that. I actually like that idea. Um, of course, this is also all assuming that Arthur Kaliev will not be an option for next season. We'll certainly get into a lot more of this type of discussion. Uh, once training camp comes around, once there's maybe a, a resolution to what the Kings are going to do with Arthur Kaliev, how he fits in as well, uh, and, and things like that. But always fun to talk about lines. Uh, the next email comes from Colin, now in Manhattan, Kansas, formerly Ontario, California. It says, I'm a bit late in responding to some things from previous episodes. My apologies. First, thank you for the update about the Kings leaving iHeart. I listen to games online, so it's good to know I can still listen to the games on the LA Kings app. Thank you for the update on Tanner Pearson. He was one of my favorite players when he was with the Kings, and I followed his career since he left, though I can't bring myself to wish him Good fortune with his new team, the Golden Knights. I do wish him much success as a player. I appreciate you having Jared Shaffron on your podcast. He and Josh Schaefer do a great job covering the Ontario Reign. Thanks for all the great work you do, and go Kings go. And again, that was from Colin in Manhattan, Kansas. Well, thank you, Colin. Appreciate that. And if you're a fan of Jared Shaffron, uh, I think we've got some good news as we are going to call on him to join us for an interview uh, to preview the upcoming rookie face-off that is two weeks away from today on Friday. And our final email comes from Scott in Vegas. And I normally kind of shy away from these because I just don't want to thank you guys I, that I read these emails that are kind of pumping up my tires. But uh, we're going to read this one anyway because it's just all about him being uh, thankful for the show. So Scott in Vegas says, Eddie, thanks for all you do for us Kings fans. You do a great job. Uh, so good, in fact, that your voice and show has become the norm for many of us. And that's the best compliment one can get. When I think I need some Kings news, I immediately tune into Eddie Garcia on Locked On. Keep up the good work, Eddie. We look forward to your shows. And thanks for giving us Kings fans a chance to chime in on our thoughts. It makes us feel like our opinions matter. Well, thank you very much, Scott. I talked about showing people that you appreciate uh, that you appreciate them. And Scott has certainly done that with me. So very kind words. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you so much. Um, and uh, your your opinions do matter as Kings fans. And that's why we have this show every week throughout the entire year. We, we will definitely continue this uh, during the regular season. Um, there are times where maybe it could be a Thursday or a Friday situation. Um, but the fan feedback shows, I think, are important. I do want to give you guys your chance to chime in. And uh, so we're definitely going to keep that always going as long as I'm hosting the show. So again, thank you to everyone who took the time to email or to message. Really appreciate it. This show is literally not possible without your participation. If you want to participate into a future fan feedback show, we'll do it again next Friday. The email address is always locked on Eddie at gmail.com, E D D I E. And for you every day is, or right now for a little bit longer, every other day is, uh, we will be talking to you next Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I uh, also love you to stay interactive uh, with the show. Following us on X, Twitter, and Instagram, we are at Locked On LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you for listening and watching this episode of Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday. And as always, go Kings go.